Hello, this is Mecha J11, and here's my Sterling engine that pretty much failed, um, as I showed in the last video. So I'm going to be disassembling it in this video, and we'll see what um, exactly happened to it, and see how much rust is in the um, <clears throat> the cooling jacket, and um, yeah, just see what happened to it. So pretty simple how to take it apart here. Well, not really, but so I, to take the wood frame off, there's screws here, here, and here, and then. Just unconnect the linkage and all that, and pretty much it'll be taken apart. <clears throat> I think how I'm going to melt all the solders, I'm just going to heat it up with the um, natural gas torch, my br Bunsen burner, and that should pretty much melt all the solder, and it should pretty much fall apart from there. Okay, so here's the um, displacer chamber and water jacket all taken out, and it seems to be the um, whipped cream cans seem pretty good. They, they're they holding up um, because I had this glowing red hot. And it looks like down here it got a little bit of um, oxidation, but that's about it. I mean, it would hold up for a while. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to put it in my propane or natural gas torch here, um, Bunsen burner, and heat it up here and melt the solder, hopefully. And it should all come apart. At least that's my hope. Some stuff is falling off there. But it's not all coming off yet. There we go. That part's off. It's a bit rusty in there. I just gotta get that off. I'm not sure I'm gonna do that. Hmm. Maybe I'll just heat it up and slide it down. There we go, it's off. So now, well, pretty much off. So it's a little bit rusty, not real bad, not as bad as I was expecting, but it is rusty. So those sacrificial anode experiments, if I put one of those in there, sacrificial anode from a penny, some zinc, that should take care of it. So now let's get this off here, the pull tab that I designed to hopefully be easily, make it easy to take off, we'll see if it even works with the solder. Oh yeah. That came apart real nice. So that was just soldered on there. As you can see, it looks like it made a pretty good seal there. And I'll just pull it apart. I'll probably turn my Bunsen burn off here. Well, a second, let's heat this up a little bit more. Yeah. There we go. It's apart. Let's turn this off. Okay. So I don't know how hot this is. So there is our displacer. Oh, wait a minute. That is a problem. Look at that. The bottom of the can popped out. So it got a lot of pressure inside there, enough to pop that bottom out. Wow. So that's why... <clears throat> See, look at the rod there. So the JB weld didn't hold up to the high temperature, and um, that bottom busted out there from the pressure. So I wonder how I would make it so that this doesn't build up so much pressure in there. So that's why it was hitting the bottom, because that bottom bulged out. Huh. Interesting. It's a little rusty in there, no? Well, not really rusty. It's just kind of corroded. But that solder sure made it easy to take apart. That's for sure. Lots of solder blobs everywhere. <laughs> Could we use that solder? Yeah, that worked pretty good. So. A little bit rusty on top there from the water sitting there. <clears throat> a little, not really rusty around there. Well, actually right, right there, there's a little ring of rust between the solder. And there's the lid. So this strip actually worked better than I thought because I just pulled that right off because solder isn't real strong, um, but it did make a good seal. I mean, it was strong enough to keep um, this strip on and keep the cans together real nice. And because it was in the water jacket, it never got hot enough to melt unless I didn't have water in there. But um, yeah, that made it a pretty nice seal. And I just grabbed the pliers and pulled it right off. 
without heating it up. So, yeah, because that solder wasn't melted there. I don't know if I should bust this open or not. But I had actually thought that this, um, this JB weld here around this seal had actually failed. But it doesn't look like it has. It just, this bottom popped out. So then I guess, so probably because it got stuck, the JB weld holding the bottom of the shaft was still stuck there. And I jammed it a bunch of times and that got this to slide up and down. So we were losing power when it was doing that. So I had actually thought that it can kinked and stuff. So it looks like the JB weld somewhat held up. So it held up around this seal. But this seal and in the bottom of the can here, it did not hold up. So, interesting finds there. It looks like it was rubbing a little bit on the walls there, but that was probably after it kind of failed. Or maybe when there was a vacuum in here, possibly. But, um, yeah, so that was pretty interesting. Um, so now I can definitely start working on my new one more because I have those boards there, or the frame and the flywheel and all that because I pretty much only have one of those, at least one that's good, so I've got all that now, so now I should be able to make my new one, I just have to cut out a piece of metal, um, that's what's holding me up, basically, um, because I need a perfect circle, circle this big around in the, um, in a piece of, a little bit sh thinner than one fourth inch steel, so, so yeah, I need a hole. So I have to cut that and figure out how I'm going to cut that and then I should be able to work on that Sterling engine and we'll have some videos up of that soon. Okay, so here's the bottom of the can cut off, or the, the displacer. So probably actually two things took into play to make it fail like this. Um, one was that the pressure in here um, from the heat, because it couldn't escape anywhere, um, because I sealed it all the way up. It was probably pressing on the bottom a lot. There was probably a lot of pressure on the bottom. And number two, this had probably heated up a lot and the JB weld had kind of started to um, disintegrate from the high temperature. And it probably got too weak and the pressure got too high. And a combination of those two popped out, the or the JB weld failed, and this bottom popped out. And then once that happened, it got jammed because this shaft was still glued up there. The bottom of the displacer shaft was still glued there, and so I took the flywheel. I thought the bottom of the can had actually, right here on this JB weld here, had actually popped off, and so I jammed the flywheel because it was stuck, and that's probably what broke. So then that JB weld there broke, and the JB weld up here broke, and then the shaft started sliding up again, up and down. So when this, when this would bottom out, this would just slide up and down and take the stroke. So that's why I wasn't getting very much power there at the end and was making awful sounds because this would go like that. So yeah, pretty pretty neat little fail there. And now I know how to, um, if I ever want a can that has a rounded bottom like this, just put pressure in it and it'll pop out. So, so yeah, um, that's it for this engine. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.